on our colorful honeycomb and this is a real fun piece and we're going to give it some texture and we're going to start out by applying our color to our gourd piece and I'm just using my number two wax tool and we're just going to apply color here and there all over. This is Robin's egg. You also could make turquoise out of blue, green, and white. Mix 50-50. And I've warmed my tool. That's real important. If you've not worked with the process very much, there is a video at miriamjoy.com. Just click on the YouTube videos and it's my one that ends up on front. And that's a great one to show you the basics of the wax technique. And I'm going to switch over to Carnation Pink. And there is no right or wrong on how you put your color on. Just don't go back over the wax once you've applied it because it's got to cool down and you're just going to pick it up and spread it around and it's going to come back right back up. If you wanted bigger sections, you could use the stipple brush to apply the, the wax as well. I use those quite a bit now with this process. This is yellow green. There's also a real bright green. It's a specialized green called inchworm. It's almost like a fluorescent green, and I really like that green. But I try to keep colors that you can get easier access to. You want to make sure that you cover up all of the gourd shard. If you leave pieces undone, chances are it's not going to melt in that area, so you always want to make sure that you do all of the gourd shard. So you don't want to go back over that because it picks that up. Now we're going to add dandelion. And dandelion is our yellow, and the yellow is too thin and it's not as bright. And I really, really like the dandelion. It really brings the piece to life. It just makes everything stand out and pop really, really well. So I like to use a dandelion a lot. Okay, so we've got that all done. We're going to let that cool just a second so it's all the same temperature. And then we're going to start warming this up and melt it all. And we're going to start around the outside first because that takes the longest to melt. And we'll go more towards the middle. If you lift it up like this, I lifted it up instead of bringing my tool down because I have my tool anchored, but you don't want to have your hand directly under it. It's very, very hot. And you can see it's starting to melt. Just blow it around till you kind of get the design you want. Don't do it too much. And the design's not going to show as much in this piece as other pieces. There's just a yellow that's sticking up that I was just trying to get melted there. Okay, so we've got that nice and pretty. So we're going to let that dry for just a while and we're going to start working on our netting. 
And our netting is just a, any type of netting. You can use like the kind that they put around the fruit. You can, it's just a plastic netting. You also can use um, your bath, oh, they're not loofahs, I don't think they're called by that, but your sponges are this, so you can find the end of it and cut a little section out and get enough that you have two pieces in case you don't quite do the first one right. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to coat this netting, and I'm going to be using a dark purple metallic color which is called deep space sparkle it's a dark purple it's not black but it's very dark so that's a reason to give us the um, the difference between the two the contrast so I am using my stipple brush and I'm just going to put that color just on the area the necklace is going to be. You don't have to do the whole thing. Just make sure that you have it coated really, really well. And you don't want it so much that you get the color in between and it starts to kind of cake up in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this netting now. Remember which side you painted it on. And we're going to kind of set it around our piece and you can hold it in the back if you want a bigger piece that you can hold I didn't let that dry enough I'm not sure I didn't buff some of that off we're gonna do it one more time here probably shouldn't have cut it. I should have left it a little bit longer, but that's okay. And now this is real important that we do not overheat this. We're going to do this on a real light temperature. kind of get it where I want it and real important once you get it there you don't want to move it like I said if we left it longer and I could hold it from the back we would be doing better but that's kind of a good thing to see so you know if you do it what you want to do or don't do And if you do melt a piece through, and on this other one I did melt part of it through, that's okay. And I've got my gun up very, very, very high. And you just kind of want to get it, I don't know if you can kind of see, it just kind of sparkles when it kind of sets and kind of melts. Now we're going to leave that for just a second. And I didn't get it all the way on the edges. If you want to get it all the way on the edges, you can. And we're just going to lift that off. Now, I moved it around so much that I took a lot of this off, which I wish I wouldn't have. But also, if you do it just with that, with no color on it, you just get the kind of snake skin look. So I really do like that as well. So there, you can work with that either way you want to get that. Um, again, just make that wide, long enough to hold on to that in the back. But if you want to do it plain, then you just get the division amongst your wax as well. And you get that real neat netting looking. So let's go ahead 
and we're going to get ready to put our finish on our piece and we're going to be using our Maj Paj Dimensional Magic and our Dimensional Magic is real important it's a really hard finish don't think just Maj Paj but you gotta have your Dimensional Magic it's made to use on glass or to make to look like glass on like paper things and jewelry items so it's a real real thick coating so once this is cooled down we're going to come in and we're going to scrape our sides you want to remove all the wax you want to make sure that you have no wax left on the sides because we're not going to put our varnish on the sides okay and anything that's left on top you want to get all that off so you don't have any of that left and we're going to put it on the edges first and we're going to come back and really add a lot to it. Now the reason we're doing this is we want to make sure that we get our edges sealed. You're just barely coming over the edges and getting your finish between the wax and the top to make a nice seal. So if this gets warm, you don't have to worry about the wax coming out the sides. Now we're going to put a lot of this on and we're just going to kind of move our brush around to spread it. We're not really brushing it. So we just kind of lightly move it along. And it's better to have too much than not enough. If you can see your brush strokes, you don't have enough and you need to add more. And you can see it just kind of settled down. Now because the gourd's not flat, we can't add all of this at one time so we want to do at least three to five coats and if it's going to be a necklace that's going to be worn outside I always tell you to test it it's always better to test it than it is to have problems later so always test your product now we're going to add three to five layers of um, finish on top and then give it three hours to dry and then we'll come back and finish up our necklace